Oh, Brian Alvarez here, Wrestling Observer Live. Yes, Mike Sempervivi is here. Twitch.tv slash F4W video. Mightier 1090, Sports Byline Broadcasting, the American Forces Network. The list goes on and on. We got a lot of news to get into here today. As noted in the opening segment, Raw was last night. Show ends. It's the Go Home Raw episode for the Hell in a Cell. And for reasons I cannot explain, we still only have four matches for the Hell in a Cell pay-per-view on Sunday. Roman Reigns versus Jey Uso, an I Quit match in Hell in a Cell for the Universal title. Drew McIntyre, Randy Orton, Hell in a Cell match for the WWE title. Bailey versus Sasha, Hell in a Cell match for the SmackDown title. And Jeff Hardy versus Elias. So for the guy asking the other day, I don't know how they're going to get that cell in there. I presume they're just going to lower it. I presume there's plenty of room there at ringside. But it's not going to be every match inside Hell in a Cell. There's at least one that is just a singles match right now. Which, by the way, the storyline of that match is Elias is blaming Jeff Hardy for running him over. Jeff Hardy notes he did not run him over. He has already been cleared. Elias says, well, I don't care. I'm going to beat you up anyway. I'm also doing a concert where... I'm basically a baby face on stage, but as soon as the concert ends, I tell everybody that I hate them. That literally was one of the lyrics in the song. I'm not making this up. So that's the lineup for Hell in a Cell, and Mike, very quickly, what did you think of this Raw show? It was three hours long, and it was a, a long thing to get through with Elias's christian rock concert then he butchered the name of his album and he's got absolutely no reason to be going after jeff hardy who remember that time jeff hardy said that's my painting man well now it's i didn't hit you with that car man and there was slapjack who i think got knocked out i don't know if he got knocked out or not but i, I will say this he should have probably been the one to take the submission with with t-bar i mean there was a lot to this show that I didn't get why did Ruby Riot and Liv Morgan have to appear and, and not be involved really in the finish? Why did they have to go ahead and throw the draft out a couple days after it was over? And this was supposed to be a showcase for these new people that were coming over. I don't know. It was a long show to get through, and there was a lot of stuff that was just like, okay, I guess let's just get to Sunday, and hopefully the matches are good at Hell in the Cell and great, but... One thing, too, because I know I'm sure you're going to go off about retribution here. They have been doing retribution, the Hurt Business, for so long. And Survivor Series is only a month away. Even if you wanted to ball up retribution like trash, and I know a lot of people believe that's what they did, even though I thought Ali cut a good promo, they were certainly in a position of weakness all night long. No question about that. But even if you were done with them, why not just wait till Survivor Series so you have something there that would actually make sense, a traditional matchup where you could have the Hurt Business run through everybody if you wanted to and have Bobby Lashley give everybody the Hurt Locker and, and you could have been done with it there. I don't know why they decided to do this when this has been going on for so long. All right, so here's a quick look at what happened on the show, everybody. We had... Hurt Business versus Ali, Mace, T-Bar, and Slapjack, which, as we noted, they could have just done this on pay-per-view. But they did it not only on Raw, but for free on Raw with no build. This wasn't even advertised in advance. Lashley submits T-Bar. Tap, 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 tap with the Hurt Lock. That is the end of that. Somehow, we have some sort of feud that involves The Fiend and Alexa Bliss, Retribution and The Hurt Business, all of whom are heels. We had AJ versus Matt Riddle. AJ has a new bodyguard, and this bodyguard is so intimidating. Jordan Amagbahin, and he is intimidating. He's like seven foot three, legit. But he's so intimidating that the referee begs him to get out of the ring. He balls up his fist, and Matt Riddle gets scared and hit with a Styles Clash and pinned. I mean, I like that they're introducing a new guy, but you could not have made Matt Riddle look like a bigger dork in this match here. Dude, they way overthought this thing. I mean, Big Bubba Rogers uh, it was the, the great example of this. You could have had Matt Riddle still look strong and like hit this guy with something that he doesn't sell, and then Riddle can just back up. But when you have a UFC fighter that you give that kind of video intro to leading into the match, and then he takes a flat back bump because Jordan turns around and looks at him, and then he runs into the ring because he balls up his fist and runs right into AJ Styles' finishing move, 
it was crazy, you know, and, and referees having, you know, being completely impotent too by having him beg to get out of the ring. I thought that was just, it was way overdone with this guy. And it's fine because he's supposed to be standing there and look intimidating. I mean, it's Halloween. So you have a monster, you know, movie type of guy there that's intimidating. And that's great and everything, but you didn't have to make everybody and everything look so weak next to him. We had Lana facing Asuka for the Raw Women's title, and in fact, Asuka beat her in like two minutes with the Asuka lock. So that's the end of that. And that led to the Riot Squad from SmackDown, Dana and Mandy, Peyton and her new partner, Lacey Evans, who is the newest team that can't get along, and Nia and Shayna. It is a four-way, it is a non-title match, and the champions win to make sure that we have no challengers for the pay-per-view coming up on Sunday. Elias did his concert. We had Sheamus versus Kofi, which was the only good match on the entire show. They had a very good match. We had Titus O'Neil offering to join the Hurt Business, and they turned him down and beat him up. They need a new business manager. A rare misstep for MVP here, I believe. Miz and Morrison faced Tucker and his partner, El Gran Gordo, the Great Fat who was just Otis underneath a mask. By the way, I didn't even mention Get in that. Here. I didn't you even sure? mention. I got to go back. This New Day deal right here. I mean, can you imagine? They cried, they broke up, and then all of a sudden on Friday, we just have them back together again. And now here they are on this show, and Biggie is in the audience cheering them on in the Thunderdome. No shirt. Well, at least he didn't show up on the actual show. But Otis did, and... Him and Tucker beat Miz and Morrison. So I, I guess if you put a mask on, you can just go from show to show. And then finally, the main event, it was Braun Strowman, Keith Lee. Braun Strowman pins Keith Lee in three minutes with a big boot. Following a low blow, Keith Lee gives him a low blow afterwards, beats him up. They think that I care to see this match again, but no. why would I? No, no. And one more thing, by the way, in the main event... They do the easiest angle. Orton gets in the ring. He says, before I talk, I want this cage lowered. They lower the cage around him. I thought, well, here we go. It's so easy. Drew McIntyre is going to come out from under the ring. Randy Orton's going to be trapped in the Hell in a Cell. Drew McIntyre beats his ass to show that once you're in this Hell in a Cell, there's no way in and there's no way out. Well, instead, Drew comes down the aisle. He can't get in. Randy says, come get me. And so Drew produces bolt cutters. And in fact, he just gets in the cage. They kill the gimmick. And on top of that, after killing the gimmick dead, they don't even deliver. They just go off the air. A baffling episode. I don't know what else to say. Even if you don't think they killed the gimmick dead because, you know, logic would say that all you need is a pair of bolt cutters to cut open, you know, the, the chain. Uh, forget about that. The fact that they go off the air with it as if they're doing some sort of high art like drama where people actually are going to be so wrapped that they're going to throw money at them to tune in and pay for the network on Sunday no. <laughs> and so it just made it a disappointing end to a television show. I mean, that's the way I looked at it. The whole thing just fell completely flat. And, you know, Randy being a prick and having Drew come out from behind him, you know, because he was underneath the ring, something like that, I thought would have been a far better way to do it, even if you take people up to the point and not showing them actually touch. But I would have even done that at least and had them start to fight. I mean, my God, all last week through the main event of the show, they had those two guys brawl with each other. Why would they not do this again here? You know, somebody here on the Twitch chat said, how in God's name can you screw up Keith Lee? And the answer is, I have no idea. Yeah, you do. Dude, he is, of all of the people they can call up from the main roster, aside from the guy who's 7'3", he's big, he's strong, he's thick, he's heavy, he's got charisma, and he can cut a promo. And they still screwed him up. The only thing I can figure, the only clue I have, is they made him put a shirt on. Back in a moment, Observer Live. 